we, we shared a recent example from our own farm at Kansas State University, um, certainly not with ASF, but we actually had our first break with porcine epidemic diarrhea virus at our home farm. And so we used environmental sampling at the farm very heavily to help us train our own farm employees, but then also better track the virus um, so that we could walk it out of the farm and more importantly, keep the feed mill clean and keep an offsite nursery clean and using this environmental sampling and um, feed mill sampling to make sure that we minimized risk. Now we've talked about people coming and going, but what about the trucks yeah. and, and other vehicles? So that's certainly one of the concerns that we had on our farm. We had, um, at, at our K-State farm, we have one feed truck, really two feed trucks that, that deliver feed back and forth, but one that was used most, most heavily. And it frequently, two, three, ten times a week, depending upon what was going on, would make its way from the feed mill to the swine farm and back, but then it also went to other farms. Um, and so we were trying to make sure that the feed mill was not contaminated. That we know is a really big risk because once a virus gets into a feed mill, it's really hard to decontaminate it. Um, we've done some of that research and so we wanted to make sure that we kept the feed mill clean. One of the things that we were able to do is since we had two feed trucks, one we designated to be inside the farm itself. And so we moved it to the inside of the perimeter of the farm and then we moved feed through the stinger from the feed mill truck over the fence line into the truck that existed within the perimeter of the farm. And then from there, it delivered feed into the different, um, the different barns that were within the perimeter. And so then we used environmental sampling to make sure that the feed mill truck that went back to the feed mill did not get contaminated during that time. Um, we actually kept the feed truck out of the feed mill until those swabs came back negative. But what we did find about the truck in the inside of the perimeter was pretty interesting. That again, it's not necessarily the feed or the ingredients that were really a risk or a reservoir fomite for the disease, but it was the truck itself. The tires, the pedals, the foot pedals, um, and the step that employees were using to get into the truck and out that became the biggest risk for carrying PEDB. It gets complicated in a hurry, but again, we, we try as much as possible to use data to make decisions. And so what we've done at ksuswine.org is posted um, a number of feed safety resources, such as how to do environmental sampling and how to even interpret environmental sampling, how to do biosecurity audits for feed mills, and we have a biosecurity checklist for feed mills, so that hopefully as we help feed mills and help feed facilities and, and farms better understand what their risk is, that they can make more data-based decisions that are risk-based so that they're tackling the highest priority items. Now we've talked about the feed mill at K-State and we've talked about commercial feed mills, but what about on-farm feed mills where they're making feed and distributing it to maybe their contract growers or to just other farms that they own? Um, that's got to be an accident waiting to happen. It is certainly a higher risk activity. And so um, in that case, we again, we take a lot of um, emphasis and put it around contaminated farms and trying to prevent transmission to other barns. And I would just um, emphasize to the veterinarians and to the producers that are dealing with a disease incident within one of their farms to put that same biosecurity emphasis around their feed mill, understanding that it can also be a risk for disease transmission.